And uh, second off, let's get right into it. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and uh, we will dive right in and look to see exactly what is happening with this mortgage industry and um, what we can do to take advantage of uh, the lower rates and what's happening with housing. So um, let's jump right in. So first off, rate and housing forecast 2023. Let's look to see what we have in store for us. This is the current market right now. As if you look at the candlestick charts, um, this since October, we've gotten a little bit better in rates. Remember rates hit almost 7% back here. We got down to around six and then we saw a little sideways action and then a little bit worse when you saw the spending bill come out and there's some inflationary scares there, some overseas uh, bond market activity that just didn't do well. Uh, as far as when it uh, affected the U.S. economy and the U.S. bond market here. But then we saw the, the green candlesticks. Remember, that's good. Green is good. Red is bad. Uh, we saw a little bit more um, positivity last week with the inflation numbers. And then we saw wage inflation. Wage inflation on Friday came in lower than expected. So wage inflation is actually really, really bad. Um, Wage inflation really is really tough to control once it gets out of control, but it came in lower than expected. So that was really good. So we saw a really, really good day on Friday. And then today we, we broke even higher than that. So we went through one, two, three, four layers of resistance on Friday. That's a big move, guys. Anytime you go through one, it's important to go through two, then three, then four in one day. That's a significant push. So uh, really excited about that. And then obviously today we're following suit with a little bit higher in the bond market as well for continuing the rally. So really good news right there. So where does that put mortgage rates today? Now, these are what I like to show is the average rates that the Mortgage News Daily website uh, posts. This is a third party. It's a non-biased uh, company, and they come out with the average rates across the nation. So right now on a standard Fannie Mae 30-year fixed um, 6.2. Now your, your credit scores, your down payment, your property types, all of this influence this rate. This is based on a very vanilla uh, scenario. 740 credit score, conventional loan, single family detached home, primary residence, just vanilla. 15-year, uh, we're at 5.7, the same scenarios. 30-year, uh, we're under six. That's exciting news. 5.1-arm, uh, look at this, guys. It's higher than a 30-year. We'll talk about that inverted yield curve a little bit later. Um, FHA, we're at right around 6%, VA right around the same, 6.05. So rates are getting better. And I told you guys, hopefully Christmas time, we'd see a little bit better rates. We saw a little bit of a backwards move when we saw the overseas data with the bond markets in different countries, but uh, the inflation numbers are causing our rates to get into the fives very soon. And let's let's get into that a little bit more. So these are inflation rates, guys. The 30-year fixed rate up here versus inflation. Usually, they follow each other. It goes up here, goes up here, kind of flat here, kind of flat here, goes uh, up here. We saw a little dip here, dip, went up a little bit. And then right here, the consumer price index, the inflation numbers right here, dropped off a cliff. And uh, this was during COVID. Our, I don't even remember, guys. The inflation numbers went way down. And... Um, Nobody was buying anything in the beginning, so cost of goods got kept dropping, dropping. And then uh, look at the 30-year fixed. It kept dropping, dropping. But during the same time, we had QE, quantitative easing. This is the Fed's buying mortgage-backed securities at a very, very high rate um, in the billions per month. And that kept our rates even lower and lower until we were in the twos. And then we got into a little inflation peaked. And look, when inflation started showing, it was transitory. But was it really? Well, they said it was. So they continued their QE spending because they thought it was transitory. And so the mortgage rates kept steady because of the QE. And then they realized, uh-oh, it's not transitory. And then mortgage rates had to catch up with the spike in inflation that happened. So they went way up real quick and had to catch up to the inflation numbers. And we went past that. And as you can see, mortgage rates peaked already here in the sevens. Inflation started coming down. We'll talk about that in just a second. And then mortgage rates are on their way down to follow. So inflation drives interest rates. If anyone tells you it's something else, they don't know what they're saying. So 
Here's the inflation numbers. Again, this is really important. Um, if you look, December of last year, we had a 0.6. Our inflation numbers this December were lower. So now we have an overall lower because we're dropping. We're including a lower number and we're removing the higher number and doing a new average for 12 months. That's how we get this number up here, the total CPI. And we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five out of six of the next uh, CPI numbers really high that we're going to be replacing with lower numbers. So except for March, expect interest the interest rates to get better because mortgage interest rates follow inflation, and we're going to have lower inflation numbers being subtracted to, to replace these higher numbers. So mortgage rates will drop because we're going to be including lower numbers, subtracting those for these higher numbers. So every month, we'll see it, except for March, that might be a pretty flat month. But April, May, and June, good grief. Right before summertime, we're going to see some pretty good rates, guys. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about something else with rates. And that's inflation on shelter, shelter costs. Shelter costs spiked in a ridiculous way. Um, and these are rents for the most part. So way high. They went way up. And 39% of the CPI, the consumer price index, the inflation numbers, 39% is shelter costs. So as that goes up, we are coming down. But when you start a lease back here, it's not 12 months till you get a new one to kind of bring those numbers down overall. So these peaks right here, these lease agreements, these numbers are still going to be on the books for 12 months, just like the last inflation readings on the um, that we had on the CPI. It's an average. So it's going to take a while for these really high lease numbers to drop off as rents, uh, as a slowdown happens. But as you can see here, this is the actual number going up. So we're going to have a little bit of a headwinds against the shelter cost inflation because 39% of the inflation number is shelter costs and they're going up, but they will start to turn back around. It's kind of like a roller coaster. The front's going down where the back is going up. Uh, once they start to turn, we're going to see more of a rapid pace of the CPI getting better. So we'll, we'll go over that in just a second, but I want to show you the, the whole, what I talk about the, the roller coaster. This is the front. They're like really excited. It's going down, super excited, but something back here is holding them back. And these are the, what I call the higher numbers, right? This is the shelter CPI holding everything back. January, we're kind of right in the middle here. We're like, okay, it's coming. It's almost there. We're going to get lower CPI, but we got these people behind us still that are holding us back from really flying down this hill. That's exactly how it's going to happen with the um, CPI numbers. As this shelter CPI gets up here, a couple months, that CPI is going to drop fast. So that's a little bit of insight there on what rates will do. So all segments are lower in the inflation world, except for shelter costs. I don't want to talk about eggs. Eggs, I don't know why they're so expensive right now, but if somebody can figure that out and call me, let me know. You know and until then, I may buy some chickens. <laughs> but uh, everything's coming down for the most part, except shelter costs. But when that does, we're going to start to see a speedy recovery. Now, rates. Rates are pretty easy to, to kind of um, gauge compared to the 10-year treasury. The 30-year fixed mortgage and the 10-year treasury over the last 35 years have usually been between 175 and 200 basis points. Look at that. Every, I mean, it's everywhere. 175 to 200 basis points, except for right now. We're at 300 basis points. The reason is there's value in servicing a loan. And if you know you're going to be servicing that loan for a while and getting paid to service that loan for a while because rates are flat or dropping, you're going to hold that loan for a while and you're going to have some value there. But when you, when you have a spike in interest rates right now and you're holding a mortgage that has a rate that's going to be higher than what it will be in a year from now, there's no value there. So they have to make up on that spread. So you have a 300 basis point spread right now between the rates and the 10-year. Now, when that starts to drop, when rates start to drop, that's going to also drop quickly as well. So if you look right here, and I'll show you the next screen, this is now narrowing with rates dropping. This 300 basis points is going down to like 275 right now. But as it continues, it should be 200 basis points over right here is where we should be, right? So that means the the 10 year now is at, excuse me, three and a half. We should be at five and a half. But no, we're still six and a quarter, still 
we're still out of range of that, but that will shrink as well. And that will lead to another factor in why rates are coming down. Now, the recession is here, recession is coming, whatever. There's a lot of debate over it. Here's what we know. If you look at this bottom graph, look at the savings rate. When we had COVID, we had tons of stimulus. The savings rent rate went way up. And then after the, after the stimulus ended, they started living off their savings. And then whoop, another, another spike right here, another um, little, in, little uh, bonus right here, a little stimulus package, right? And then savings went up and then oh, it came back down. And now people are living off their savings and kind of dwindling that right now. That coincides with this up here. This is the credit card spending. A lot of credit card spending went up, 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 up. And then money was in the money was readily available, right? So credit cards went way down. Spending went way down because we had all this money, all this cash, all the savings, right? And some people were paying rent, but they were getting money free in the mail. It was kind of a crazy time. Um, so we saw the credit cards go down, but now look at that spike. That's that credit card use has gone way up and savings has gone way down. This does have a finite timeline. So when this slows down and this hits its quote wall, people don't won't have enough money or won't have any more money on their credit. They're going to hit their, their maximums. And then slowing is going to really happen because they're going to slow down their spending habits. Right now, they're still the same spending habits as what they had back here. They're going to come to a rude awakening when those credit cards are maxed out and all of their spending slows down. And that's going to, that's where the recession will probably be announced at that point. Now, mortgage rates always do better or do well in a recessionary environment. Um, but here's something interesting. This is another sign of the recession is here. Inverted yield curve. Every single time there's been an inverted yield curve where it's been below, where it's been negative, there's been a recession following. Negative recession, negative recession, negative recession. It happens every time. Negative recession will be, will be announced. So it's like clockwork. It's easy to see. And, um, but a lot of people are thinking that, let's look at housing. Is there a crash? No, we all thought there'd be a correction. Some people thought there'd be a crash. All of us thought there'd be a correction because let's just face it, it was nuts. People were paying 10% over asking for properties. It was crazy. So we have seen about a two and a half percent correction, about normal. But think about this, 39% in the last two years. That's what we've seen in appreciation. Over the last 10 years, 115%. So two and a half percent, no big deal. We know why rates spiked, but guess what? There's a lot of activity right now, guys. Most of the customers that I'm working with that are on hold, they're all coming back to the market right now and to, to March. This is the buying season. If you look at a graph, every, every time November, December hit, the markets slow down a little bit. It's just how it works. We're gonna see some pretty good buyer demand coming up here shortly. So expect that to happen. So here's the housing forecast. We are going to see lower inflation, which means better rates. We will see a recession-like slowdown. What this means is people may lose their jobs. But keep in mind, there's over, there's almost 11 million, if not 11 million by now, open jobs in the United States. 11 million. So they may lose a job and then change sectors and go somewhere else and may have to move. Well, that creates out opportunity in real estate as well, and it creates a buy and a sale. So there's still going to be opportunity. It's almost like you're uh, putting water on a uh, an anthill. People will move around, right? That's what a recession does. It causes scattering around. That causes opportunity for real estate. Um, in incomes are increasing. There is wage inflation, but it's not as bad as it was. It's come down. That's why the markets had such a good uh, good rally on Friday. But inc incomes are still increasing, so that's good. It's healthy. As long as they increase at the two to three percent, is the same as inflation rate. We're good. Um, there is very tight inventory. And rents are still expensive. So housing forecasts should be decent this year. Not going to see crazy appreciation. It's going to be normal. And what's normal? Two to four percent. Some people think it'll be zero for a while and then go back to normal. And that may happen. But I don't think we're going to see any type of a crash. Low single digit appreciation for most of the U.S. with a pickup in activity. That's what we're seeing. Now, mortgage rate forecast. Here's the stuff that we have against us. Other countries, other global markets, <clears throat> excuse me, they're going to be our biggest headwind. We can't control what their banks are doing, their central banking system. <clears throat> However, we know what we're going to be doing. And we know that every once in a while, we may see rates come down and something overseas could cause them to spike a little bit. So the, the rates dropping is not going to be a straight line. It's going to be, you know, 
jagged. Um, and there's a lot of more debt that's gonna be financed overseas. So, and here, because we have all those stimulus packages, all those spending bills, I think there's, the last one was 1.7 trillion. And the one before that, well, I think it was 5 trillion in a couple of years of spending. That has to be financed. That will cause rates to sometimes spike. But again, they should come down, but you may see it spike a little bit when those selling of the bonds happens and there's not a big appetite for those. So there will, those are our headwinds. Tailwinds, we are going to see lower inflation. Excess retail inventory, guys, the supply chain is getting back on course. All of that inventory is going to hit the shelves and there's going to be a lot of uh, cheaper inventory, which means inflation. That's happy for inflation because that means inflation is going down. Cheaper goods, inflation lowering. That's what we want, guys. Um, and as we increase that mortgage servicing value from 300 to 200 on the spread will happen. That's a good sign for mortgage rates. Recession likely and rates always decline during recessions. So I think we're in for a good, good run here. Uh, expect the 30-year rate fixed to move near 5% during the first half of this year. It's going to be a good first half of the year, guys. So get ready. And just to let you guys know, my mortgage team has not cut anyone. We are fully staffed, fully staffed since the peak of 2020. So we have capacity in every state except for New York and Hawaii. We can help you. And uh, we are ready for you guys. So remember, we're a bank. We are a mortgage broker and we're a mortgage banker. We have everything. We have our bank, Waterstone Bank, that's a partner with us. We have our in-house mortgage division that we are a mortgage banker. We, we do everything in-house and we have the ability to broker. We literally have everything, guys. So this is going to be a really good year. Expect lower rates um, and expect us to really shine this year in, in real estate. This first six months, I think, is going to really pick up. Last year, we kind of had a mosey, like a, a, a goofy year. We started good and we kind of eh, petered out and it was kind of gross at the end of the year. I think we're going to start slow and then really come up and it's going to be positive moving forward. So super excited about this year, guys. Uh, do let us uh, have, if you have any questions on anything mortgage related, let us help you. Uh, we're here for you. And don't forget, we will not lose on rate. If you have a quote from another lender, we will not lose on that rate. So if you're not comfortable with another lender, but they may have a better rate than us on that day, give us that. We'll match that rate for you. We will not lose on rate. So love you guys. Have a great one. And if you need anything, I'm always here for you. And we are the Woolen Mortgage Team here at Waterstone Mortgage. Thank you guys. Have a great day.